I will not lie to you. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to tell you, I have tried in every way I know how, literally from my years as a young lawyer all the way through my time as Secretary of State, to level with the American people. You talk about leveling with the American people. Have you always told the truth? I've always tried to. Always. Always. Some people are going to call that wiggle room that you just gave yourself. Well, no, always, I al always tried to. No, I mean, Dia said, I will never lie to you. You know, you're asking me to say, have I ever? I don't believe I ever have. I, I don't believe I ever have. I don't believe I ever will. I'm going to do the best I can to level with the American people. She's going to try her hardest. And, and when you put in that kind of effort, you should applaud it. <laughs> is that what that is? Is that what she's trying to say? Like, I'm really going to try. I mean, I'm not going to stop at anything to attempt to do my best to make sure that I try my hardest to be honest as best I can. But we know that she's incapable of being honest. And right. she knows that, too. Right, right. So when she lies to you, she just wants you to know. That even though it was a lie, she tried her hardest not to. Oh, my goodness. I, she put in so much sweat and tears to try. Yeah. And, and not... you know what? Sometimes people come up short. Yeah, like her, often. But she that does not mean that she didn't try her hardest. Correct. So she's trying her hardest now to get the Hispanic vote. And she goes on Enrique Santos' uh, radio show. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> I've never heard of did the guy. Did she before. change her did she switch out her hot sauce for guacamole or something? I'll remember that. I mean, for real? I, yeah, she went on a black show, a black, you know, it talk was large, show. largely listened to the black audience. Okay. And it was And the a, host was black. Yeah, and the co host was black too. And the instant she did the hot sauce and the handbag thing. I always carry hot sauce in my handbag. Instantly he goes, oh, you know this is going to look like pandering. I know. What, is it working? Ugh. That's what she said. It Was it working? She's shameless. Okay, so here's what Enrique and people were beside themselves that he <laughs> asked this question. or he, he made this statement to her. My father is voting for Trump because he says that he can't trust you. My mother says you're a crook. And my brother says you should go to jail. What would you say to them? They're listening right now and others like them. How would you convince them to sit on your side of the field? Why is Hillary Clinton the right choice for America? Okay, we could just leave it at that if you want. Oh. <laughs> no, but the, the, the thing is, he could still be a Hillary supporter. That is true. Because we all have family members who have lost their ever-loving mind. And we all do. Slipped on trails of hot sauce and <laughs> or awesome sauce, and hot, sauce. <laughs> hot awesome sauce. Right. So, um, do you want to hear her answer? Um, do you want to hear the question again? But I, you know, I'm curious though because I haven't, I have not heard the actual audio. So I'm curious. Was he a pro? I mean, she is giving him the interview, which means it he set must up. be. It was set up. The interview was set. So that means that her she has people. To be. Had to have gotten to him and give him uh, give him the thumbs up, which means he has to be a Hillary supporter. But he's the only one in his family, and he's now trying to convince her to give the give the thirty to second pitch. Convince my family. Yes, convince my family, please. But but the question though is: so My father is voting for Trump because he says that he can't trust you. My mother says you're a crook, and my brother says you should go to jail. What would you say to them? They're listening right now, and others like them. How would you convince them? to sit on your side of the field. Why is Hillary Clinton the right choice for America? Well, number one, I would ask them not to be listening to the negative attacks that uh, uh, have been uh, relentless against me. In fact, go back and look when I was Secretary of State. Oh, well, we I did. was highly uh, approved. 66% of Americans approved. They trusted me. They counted on me when I was a senator from New York. People who know me don't pay attention to the kind of ridiculous, untrue attacks. Oh, like that, the bimbo uh, eruptions? Are in the media against me that come out of, you know, Donald Trump and other Republicans. Look at what I have done. Okay. Look at the record yeah, that I have. I have a track record for helping people, oh, uh, creating health care programs, education opportunities. Uh, treat, treating people with respect. What? So I can only hope that they will turn off the, you know, constant barrage of negative uh, 
commentary and actually look at the facts. And, but they will know that uh, I am the person who will represent every American. I don't even know how to respond to that. So, so her. It sounds to me like the thing she really swung at, uh, swung towards the fences at was I treat people with respect. So that's yeah. that qualifies yeah. her to be president. Yeah. Don't listen to the negative ads like from Trump. I think you that know that question. Been a shot, it was a shot across the bow of Trump by saying that I treat people with respect, unlike other people who. If 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 you ever see a candidate that doesn't treat people with respect, they they're not qualified. Well, and that would be Trump. He disrespects women. <laughs> Whatever. So, well, I mean, that's what she keeps saying. So, this is what her camp decided to do. Okay, let's head this crooked Hillary thing off at the past because we know you're crooked, but we got to head it off because Trump's leading with you're crooked, and so is his family. Yes. <laughs> so we'll get you on this Hispanic show. Because we need to reach out for Hispanics. And he's going to ask the question, my dad thinks you're lying. Because Trump calls her a liar. Mm -hmm. And he, my mom thinks you're crooked. Ah, because Trump calls her crooked. Crooked. And my brother thinks you should be in jail. That's three. Uh -huh. Dude, if you ever want anything, make it in threes. Everything. Always odd numbers. It comes in threes. Three things. And so that was completely set up, and that was completely. Uh, uh, she was ready. Did you see how ready she was for that answer? She was yeah, ready was for it. To just walk on. fed to her. Yes. Yeah. Don't listen to what the media says. Don't listen to anybody who might have facts. However, uh, conservative Republicans are playing this over and over. <laughs> wow. In a negative, because I don't think that was a positive. Because she didn't answer. She just said, "Look, look at my record." Look at my record. Well, she tried to explain a few things, but it was a bunch of nothing. I wanted to actually dub over the top of that real time. What is it you say you do here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that we we have not found. Oh, did you hear that? Uh, did she? She interrupted Trump this week. This is something you shouldn't have. Ow, ow. What was that? Is that a dog? Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow. It's Hillary. <laughs> Oh, why'd you cut off the music part? Oh. Was, well, I don't know. If, I don't know if they Something know that. Ow, ow. What was that? Is that a dog? It's Hillary. Dude, I don't know. I don't. I don't know where that was. Aha! By the way, yeah, take on me, which was a huge one-hit wonder in the '80s. Don't sue us for copyright violation. Oh no! Well, if you shut use this it whole a, thing down, if you use it as a parody, you know, I did that one thing as a parody. If you use it as a parody, yeah, we'll we'll throw a duffel bag. <laughs> we'll give you something. <laughs> so, so another Hispanic was introducing Hillary at a, a, a rally. Okay. And, and this is what it sounded like. See if you can catch what's missing. And not a fear, demagoguery, or radicalism. Only Hillary can bring us together as one nation, indivisible, with liberty. Indivisible. Indivisible. I love it. She skipped the word God. Under God. She didn't say God. She said, one nation. Indivisible. Uh, 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 so that was her, her way. Indivisible. <laughs> uh, under. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. Oh, indivisible. You can't say that. You can't say that on a God thing. You can't do that. Oh, don't even. Don't even ask me what I think of that. So before we uh, get coming down earlier, I alluded to some breaking news on Islam. Yeah. Yeah. Islam in America. This is the CBN report. The Illinois legislature has approved a bill that would give Muslim Americans a formal vo voice in the state government. If the governor signs the bill, Illinois would be the first state in the U.S. to pass such a law. The measure creates a 21 member advisory council of Muslims to give them influence on state policy. The governor and legislative leaders would get to appoint the Muslim council members. The Chicago Tribune reports one Islamic leader who's pushing for the council says all governors in America are obligated to have an Islamic council. What? 
Dude, this is a takeover of America. It's a council that's appointed. Yes. There's no voting for no. it. No. And they have influence on policy. Yeah, it's exactly what this This is literally a takeover of American government. And that is the way they want it. They want a council to have influence. Is there is there a uh, uh, a Christian council? Is there a, a Mormon council? This is the most blatantly unconstitutional uh, separation of church and state is literally be th- that thrown would be, out the window. That would be. I mean, that is when we say separation of church and state, we, we this don't is say exactly what we're talking about. Separation from church. We're just saying that the powers need to be separated and for a, a religion to be on a council for influence on the government. That's specifically. What do you uh, think they say if, if the Pope said, hey, uh, Obama, I'm going to set up a council. And every time you make a policy, I want you to consult us. No, the, the council will probably have a vote on policy. Prob- yeah, they get they get like 100 votes to a one person vote. No, what I'm saying is when you go to a count, uh, like a, a city council meeting. Right. They're actually making policy. Right? Correct. Okay, so they make policy, and then if we don't like the policies that they make, we normally can vote out and vote in a different council member. Right. You can't with this. But bo- this is an appointed council. Right. right. So they're going to make actual real policies that we would have to follow. They said that because we want to influence policy. So this is not only unconstitutional from a religious standpoint. It would be unconstitutional from uh, just a voting. I mean, you these are represent. These are, they're not representative of the people. Yeah, because they haven't been voted on. Correct. This is just is that bad insanity? For the, well, I hope it gets obviously laughed out the door of any state government. And I am pushing for Colonel Allen West for either Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense. I can see Secretary of Defense. Yeah. Let me let me say this. And and this I don't care about being popular, or whatever. The first thing you gotta do is you got to study and understand who you're up against. And you must realize that this is not a religion that you're fighting against. You're fighting against a theopolitical belief system and construct. You're fighting against something that's been doing uh, this thing since 622 A.D., 7th century, 1,388 years. You want to dig up Charles Martel and ask him why he was fighting the Muslim army at the Battle of Tours in 732? You want to ask the uh, Venetian fleet at Lepanto why they were fighting a Muslim fleet in 1571? You want to ask the Christian, uh, I mean, the, the German, Germanic and Austrian knights, why they were fighting at the gates of Vienna in 1683. You want to ask people what happened at Constantinople and why today it's called Istanbul because they lost that fight in 1453. You need to get into the Quran. You need to understand their precepts. You need to read the uh, the Surah. You need to read the Hadiths. And then you can really understand this is not a perversion. They are doing exactly what this book says. But. And I want to close. I want to close by saying this, and I, and I think we have we have said this all through this morning so far. Until you get principal leadership in the United States of America that is willing to say that, we will continue to chase our tail because we will never clearly define who this enemy is, and then understand their goals and objectives, which is on any jihadist website, and then come up with the right and proper goals and objectives to not only secure our republic but to secure Western civilization. Thank you. You know, it's the kind of speech like that, and you know, the right, the the right, uh, the people that the Cruz supporters and stuff like that, they love Alan West, right? I'm gonna tell you right now, with the SCOTUS appointment, and then somebody like Alan West is probably gonna get a, a high level cabinet position. Huge. Some Huge. other people like, um, uh, who's the the the, uh, uh who do we got for uh, the VP? Jeff. Jeff Sessions, Sessions. those even if he's not a VP pick, I'm, he'll probably be a cabinet level position. I I think if if Trump does what I'm hoping he does, all these cruise people will be like, oh, okay, we were wrong about him. And yes, that'll be it. Yes, I'm hoping so. So Hillary was floating uh, a VP pick this this week, <sighs> a, a Hispanic uh, uh, young male. Oh, a male, young uh, Latino, a uh, very uh, affluent and with it. He's clean and articulate. Clean and articulate. 
Oh. Yeah, so it's just... The, the you thing, don't have a name? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I didn't want to go down that road. Was I, his name I, Jesus? <laughs> it was Jesus, yes.